Honk, honk. Hey, can you hear me now, mother truckers? All right. This is Brian, one of the geese. All right. Uh, you got Dowie back there in New Hampshire scrambling back to his uh, lair to uh, to jump on the air with us. Um, and uh, our good friend Rob Kaiser over at the All Around Growth Podcast is going to jump on here in a few minutes. Uh, he's going to hang out for a while before a band uh, a band get together tonight. So we figure we pick his brain a little bit. Maybe have somebody from the Midwest on balance out the East and West thing. Uh, always good to bounce ideas off each other. Um, let's see. A little house cleaning. Uh, Nicole is super busy. Her mom's in town helping her get ready. I think they're packing up. What's today? Wednesday. So, uh, yeah, here. Two more days. Uh, they're heading down and they are doing the Self-Reliance Festival out there. Uh, 19th and 20th in Camden, Tennessee. You can buy tickets at... Uh, at uh, selfreliancefestival.com. I I think it's on Nicole's website too. Anyway, just look down in the, if you're on YouTube or Odyssey, look in the show notes uh, down below. I stuck that in there earlier. Make it easier to get to. Why not? Why not? Okay. Uh, da, 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 February 16th, 2022. Bitcoin closed last night. $44,211. It's trading 14 to 1 with Ethereum, 131 to 1 Bitcoin Cash, 341 Litecoin, and 246 Monero. Monero entered the index yesterday after the Canadian trucker stuff and the banking shutdown, freeze out, whatever we can discuss with Dowie here in a bit. Uh, I decided to remove Dash and put on a privacy coin that we can tr get traded on something that you can get to pretty easily. So anyway, so XMR entered the index yesterday. So if you need a farm truck in 2022, base model Ford F-150 is going to cost you 0.9 Bitcoin yesterday, 13 Ethereum, 120 Bitcoin cash, 313 Litecoin. 226 Monero, a pound of the nice indoor cannabis. U.S. average yesterday was 0.4 Ethereum, 3.6 Bitcoin Cash, 9.5 Litecoin, 6.8 Monero, or 2.7 million Satoshis. Pound of grass-fed ground beef USDA average was around two one thousandths of an ether, two one hundredths of a Bitcoin Cash, six one hundredths of a Litecoin or four one hundredths of a Monero, or around 16,874 Satoshis. All right, well, that's the uh, that's the Bitcoin index for the day. Oh, by the dip. When isn't it the dip? It's going up. If you noticed, uh, uh, I think I remember last week we were in the 19,000 Satoshis for a pound of the ground pound of the uh, grass-fed beef. Now we're down to the 17,000s. Hmm. Interesting. I was talking about that this morning as the, uh, as the, as they print and print and print and vote and vote and print and vote and print. Um, then there's only so many Bitcoin. There's, it's deflationary by its very being the, uh, once the divergence starts to uh once the divergence starts to occur right it's gonna the hockey sticks doo -doo -doo, cruising along right and they start separating but once they start to turn it's not long when the hockey sticks go hockey stick like in opposite directions it's gonna be one day you wake up and the next day you wake up and the dollars but whoo yeah anyway uh let's see oh yeah, that's right. Dowie sent me a... Uh, okay. Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm going to flip over to the comments. Boom. Got the ticker running. Switch the uh, uh, switch the graphics up. Good stuff. Uh, Cormac Harkin, good evening. Good evening to you out there. All right. Uh, let's see. 
uh let's see that we set me uh let's see uh john's event oh yeah john's event uh the greater reset stuff um that is why jack's not on everybody's headed to his house right now as a matter of fact i think the barbecue uh has already started oh hey look there's rob da -da -da. just gotta look down hey rob how are you man hey all right how are we doing excellent excellent uh i was just reminding everybody uh jack's barbecue is starting right about now because he's having everybody down his place for the greater reset talk yes house cleaning how was your day the day is going uh here we are it's I, you know i'm on vacation have been all week it's been it's been a relaxing vacation it's been a productive vacation I got a massage earlier today. I mean, I'm, I'm feeling like a million bucks. So I, it's a good day. Oh, massages are so awesome. I traded, uh, I traded an ounce of silver at float, uh, and got a greatest massage <laughs> in the sunshine. Hippie chick. It uh, was fantastic. Well, and that, I mean, that, that came up, you know, cause she's just a small independent person. Um, you know, bar, we were talking about farmer's markets, of course, and then just the idea of of uh, bartering, you know, instead of paying cash for, for massages, we can barter services, barter goods, whatever. There's there's all sorts of ways to get people turned on to alternative economies and such. It's funny. My cousins used to call skin in Colorado, you would call it the green pass. So you would just put a pocket full of weed and when you would come down to get on the chairlift again and the chair ticket guy, instead of tick, checking the ticket, you just hand him a bud. You fucking, I, it, if you're up there, you only want to ski like the good snow anyway. Right. So you're not, you're right. not turning and burning all day. You want two, two, one or two runs in the morning and you know, you got to go to work. Yep. The green. No, those were, yeah, those yeah. were good days. The side economy, right? Like everybody participates, but they like don't think about that they do. No, and 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 oftentimes it's weird or or it's seen as such, and uh, and it's not. It's really not all that difficult to go out of your way to not only to engage in it, but to promote it as and normalize it because well, there the only thing that's not normal really is the way that we all currently operate in the normal world now. Yeah. Once you open up right to uh, accepting any value for value exchange, you don't have to ask the person who's providing the service or the thing specifically to take your specific thing. Right. You can be like, is there anything I could pay you with other than fiat that you would love <laughs> and let them shit, whatever, whatever gold ammo, Plants, have you have meat. you ever heard of this little game that you know? I guess you start with a paper clip or whatever. And I'm looking around. I don't yes, know. it's I, yeah, it's, yeah. The whole thing. It's my favorite. So you trade yeah, up when you live in a metropolis. That's what half my shit is is on my channel. Like their waste stream is so vast here because people are so stupid rich. Like. It's new money, stupid rich, right? Like I wasn't worth shit because I lived literally in a cardboard box in India like six months ago. And now I got a $2.8 million apartment overlooking Lake Union. Like the hundred grand worth of new camping gear that I stuck in that trailer thing and, and forgot about paying the rent on the storage unit like three years ago. Fuck, who cares? It's all, it's, it's ridiculous. It, so, yeah, if you glean, right, from that stream, because you know it exists, it's crazy the stuff you get. Yeah. It's just because they don't have no – yeah, or they just abandon it, or they have – yeah, or they're, like, such a tech nerd, right? They don't get that, like, that's a $1,000 tent. <laughs> yeah, and, and just, the, just the sheer amount of, of – and the volume of, of waste that – like you're talking about, I mean, another another similar example is, um, you know, here in 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 Medina, Ohio, right? We're we're kind of in this like semi uh, suburban rural fringe, and recently one of the big to dos was the Chick Fil A. We got a Chick Fil A, all right. 
So um, some of the, some the, of the guys too. that are laid off with the tree farm, uh, one of them, you know, some of them work. One of the guys uh, or gals works at this Chick-fil-A and it's just this guy's wife who still works there. So we've been talking about, uh, I don't know, the, the Chick-fil-A. It's, it's, uh, it's winter time on the tree farm. There's not a whole lot to talk about. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the long and short of it is, the, the, there's there's this rotate what she's having to learn is the rotation of food because if it sits out for x amount of hours it has to get thrown out and it can't be given away you, you know because of the corporate liabilities and yada yada, yada, yada. So yeah, it's just it's it's this fine balance of finding out or, or figuring out how much food is enough versus what what we don't throw out because some is always thrown out and she was just astonished because um, it, it's just astronomical, the amount of food that's thrown out sometimes. And, and that's just indicative of how we are as, as a society. And, you know, just, just to dovetail with what you were saying. That was the trick of running the pizza restaurants, right? Because it was a fucking oh God. art. Because you had to make dough two days ahead because it was real dough. And weather, right? fucking politics like welfare check days all like ah. <laughs> the Ouija board exactly go to make right because you're just going to waste all that labor and then and then scrape it all off and have to do the dishes for the shit you didn't sell yeah and if you're if you're making pizza like that and you know i've got a friend a church friend he's the he's the his his job he owns a local pizza joint you know none of this frozen dough no crap it's it's nice pizza and it's complex calculus it, as to how much you gotta like prep ahead because you being you know running out on people sucks too oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> okay i'll give you three three mediums for two larges <laughs> so this so this this so this watch party this is it the um Oh, gosh, Jack's I'm doing uh, Anarcho Poco because he's oh, speaking. That's what I was going to say. Speaking Thursday, I think, right? Is his is his? There, they. I just saw they moved his live of it. So yeah, if you're going to watch Jack, I think they moved his time. So pay attention tomorrow. Okay. Look, yeah. Listen, so everybody to his... should check that out. But this is this is what three three days. Four? Yeah, they do like three days when they do that conference. Um, I want to say last time float happened in the spring. It was running simultaneously because there's a big giant screen at the up by the VIP at, at Float where they had an Archipelago running in the background, right? And Float was like just a venue like Jax is going to be. And they had some speakers do their thing live from Float to, to feed the pipeline. Yeah. Who do you, do you know of any any people in, in shared circles that are that are also going to the upcoming Bitcoin conference in Miami, I guess in, I guess in April. This is this is news to me. I'm, I, I really this was just sort of in in, in other circles. Uh, I, I figured maybe you might know of some people that were doing that too. No Bitcoin conference. Uh, I don't do any like conferencing shit. I don't. I, you know. <laughs> I mean. But, uh, yeah. Used to not so much anymore. So it's uh, hard to get me to leave. I've been building so much stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh the, oh, I can be boo. Uh so we decided to have our first uh workshop. So we're gonna have a workshop April 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Uh so people can help me build the um uh the greenhouse uh thermal battery. Okay, how do you, can you can you give some teasers into into how you're doing that, or is that workshop info only? No, no, no. Okay, so I put. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So here's the deal. Oh yeah, yeah. Goose exclusive. Ah. Uh, um. So Candace just had to, you know I had to get the blessing to like have people over. Like it took a while, right? Because I I've been building the I've been building this place to be a teaching center really for the last ten years. But it hasn't been teaching center ready because we've been production-y, all kinds of crap. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> finally ready, right? So it had to go theoretically from like mm, 
getting she's been watching me build this shit for a decade right but now it's like time to have people over <laughs> it's like time to put it to use so that that had to break through the like no we're gonna like the whole thing was built to have workshops let's do it um right so how many people so you're gonna be pretty much a guest at our house so we decided eight people that's it um it could be nine so it's 300 bucks the whole weekend uh two nights three days uh I'll feed you five times um so consider it camping right uh i got couches and beds out here in the studio uh there's a room next to the studio with a, a porta john in it and bunk beds i got cots to set up so can indoor camping yeah um, yeah well, for and, a first event, any more would seem like a lot, and that just seems like it, a, a fair amount of people. It's to gonna pay for to get the stuff to do the build, so that I don't. I I could go scrounge it all for free, right? Take a year to do it, yada yada. Fuck it, I'm gonna have a workshop. I'll spend the money back in great food, and we're gonna have we're gonna have fun. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, any more people like would would just kind of take away from. It's 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 kind of like VI, you know, limited. Yeah, and it's how many people you're going to take fit. away a lot with with not all those many people. It's an 800 square foot greenhouse to and I well okay so I built that's so funny I built my main living room like a theater with raised uh, raised seating there are these big huge real leather barber chairs uh, and we just got the giant. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. So Candace is going to be cooking and such. So she's going to have her little private space in the kitchen. But since she's going to have to be in the house, and she doesn't want to listen to any politic bullshit at any time. Oh, boy. So uh, we're going to turn that into the permaculture theater. So she's going to just run YouTube permaculture videos, probably nonstop in there. Uh, so if you're in the house, no talking fucking politics. <laughs> anything permaculture is cool uh out in my shoppy space and around fucking whatever you want to you you're gonna come out here and pay and debate with me that's okay uh but yeah yeah that's hey. the uh, so that's the deal so we'll do like all day saturday we'll do uh the thermal battery build um it's gonna be it's gonna be stupid cool it's gonna have a liquid loop that pops through the wall with uh hot pecs and uh, oh. well, like into three hot water tanks that I have a separate unpressurized loop over to my wood stove. So when I'm running the wood stove, I can flip the switch and circulate the water between the three big hot water tanks. Right. It will. Yeah. It will, it, all that extra heat that's just making the house too hot. I'll store in the tanks. And if it's cold outside at the time, I'll send into the thermal mass or do right. whatever it's two different loops that are non-pressurized so we don't get a squish boom that's that's fantastic it's going to be fun i don't know of anything like it so if anyone knows of a project like it send me some links before i got to do it april 1st and i'll redo my design so friday night i figure we're gonna have a barbecue we'll draw it up on the whiteboard and like go through some tools and shit and uh you know safety whatever and then uh, it'll break down to either talking about like permaculture projecty stuff. Um, so yeah, and the other thing, uh, instead of like posting it up on all the freedom, yeah, stuff first, I'm gonna put it up on all the farm pages and social media things to get. Yeah, uh, you know, I want to talk about like. It involves like moving the whole aquaponic system and saving the lemon tree because uh, it's all got to get moved. So, you know, the big, huge fig tree, huh, she's not going to like it, but uh, well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, I, and I, I think I think selective posting initially will help like get 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 that refined crew of people that can not only, you know, take away from it, but also contribute as well and just make it make it what it's. I think what you're looking for, which is just the whole. Okay. And the deal too, right. Okay. With uh, making my coffee club thing more valuable for the club members or the cannabinoid club, whichever yada, yada. Um, so if you're in the club, it's half off, right? So you already get in free to squatch fest in May and October. So 
and you get free when I do my makers markets and have the tents in the driveway to come sell shit, you get free booth space. So for that's a bonus. This have off. So if and it's oh, certain, this isn't this is not like this is going to be yeah. you know one of just uh, the few events. This is one of many down the road. So yeah, we're going to start rolling these out because that's why we built the place to like any. show permaculture design like functioning at a ho- at a house level in a neighborhood where it doesn't look too crazy. Uh, you could ask my neighbors. I guess that's part of the tour, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. So, okay. So the V O oh, so if you do the VIP, there's only one ticket cause you get our Airbnb. So if you're like a person that likes to go to this stuff, but you're an introvert <laughs> and you need to be able to GTFO and have your own like hotel room. That's literally just on the other side of everything, but you separate entrance, you're out. You just, uh, <laughs> so, and the thing is VIP, it's a queen bed. So I don't care if there's two people in there. So if you actually pay the five instead of the three, if you're coming as a couple or somebody that's okay with being in the queen bed together, you could actually get a cheaper deal. And if you're in the club and you come as a couple, super, super score, whatever, I'm just trying to pay for the food and the stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, come party. And then Saturday, uh, Candace could do a big Italian dinner <laughs> and uh, I'm sure it'll break down into something fun. Uh, and then, yeah, yeah, Sunday, pack up, get up, whatever. I serve you coffee and we'll finish up tidying up and then probably do like a real property walk. I'll give you the whole, here's all the trees and the hoogles and the, how everything feeds together and all that. If we haven't talked about it already, or you want to film some shit, I, whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. Something nice. like that. Nice. It's, that's, that's inspiring to hear. I look forward to those. I look forward to, you know, to the, to thinking about well i don't look forward to it i'm thinking you're coming out just out come on come on no talking about having our first event here at the homestead here no do do an event yeah come do it go do it put it on yeah well i kind of i've been thinking about that and you know and dovetailing it with my folks anniversary in um you know down the road which would be yeah a real big extended shindig and that might logistically work what uh, yeah yeah what month It'd be October of 2023 would be the big, the big to do. Oh yeah. Yeah. Fuck. That would be 50 yeah. years for mom and dad. And, and, uh, 50 year anniversary is great. I love those pictures. Do you sell in sauerkraut? Okay. So how much kraut do you guys sell at a, at a market? Uh, I mean, it, or, it, are you selling jars? It really depends selling, like, because the, the way we're selling it is changing. We're, we're almost getting to a point where what is being taken to market is leftovers from what isn't being ordered by commercial vendors and, and that's growing. So that's pretty cool. So you're growing um, with the restaurant trade? No, like, like uh, just, just small, small sellers who've got a shop in town. There's a, there's a local butcher and they bought a building downtown and totally renovated it. It used to be an old feed store. And then they've opened up a coffee shop down there, um, right, right. a little microbrewery, and then just a, a market exchange type place. And we sell stuff there along with all sorts of other vendors. And they just like, they've really redeveloped this side of town and they're moving a lot of product out of there. And then there's another right. farm store and little places where we just drop boxes. They sell it. And that works. So the market, you know, hell, we're almost just selling out and um, we're really trying to to scale up to keep up because people seem to like it. And um, and that's 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 a great John needs coffee. (laughs) No, that's that's awesome. So you guys are basically doing wholesale manufacture and then wholesale distribution and you're then you're out. Let them do the retail. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it sounds, I when love you say it. it that way, I have to say, yes, that is what we're doing. No, it, that's a great it niche. it sounds weird be because it's, it's in its infancy and there's a lot of plans for taking it and scaling it up. But uh, but yeah, effectively, that is what we're doing. And But everything starts small. So no, no, the, that's where the, we're at. The last mile of the chain is so labor burden you know and that's the 
thing that's going to be insanely, insanely expensive, like labor to run the registers, people to be at the point of retail. If you can avoid that, like the fucking plague. What? It, 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 yeah, and hopefully it, now you only need another item to take with you on your run, yeah. right? To the same eight guy, like double your revenue. Boom. <laughs> I love it. Talk about running like a hamster to double revenue. <laughs> what are you doing, Dowie? What's up, man? I'm uh, I'm here. Here I am. I don't even know. <laughs> Doctor Pepper and Snickers fueled. <laughs> no I'm, blue uh, cheese. <laughs> yeah, I love blue cheese, man. I uh, yeah, here I am. I don't know. I don't know. I'm like a little scrambled right now because I just walked in and the wife's wrapping up. So we're just, me in we're wrapping about farmers market and uh. So cool. yeah, Rob's saying they sell a lot more stuff like jarred in town at like little specialty vendors like meat shops and you know wine shops stuff like that. Yeah, then then at the market. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you got? What's your? I'm probably like being redundant. What's your main product? Like, what are we talking about? Sauerkraut uh, and, and oh. different different kinds of sauerkraut, like ferments and stuff. Then. Yep. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah I pickles. can see that. Yeah. How many markets are you doing? Oh, just one market right now, and then four different retail locations. Wow, cool. Yeah, yeah, that works. I mean, the, the retail has got to be easier. Oh, for sure. <laughs> like, they place orders, we it's put insane. it in boxes, we give it to them. And that's what we were talking about. You. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, no, no, that's so it's hilarious. You're exactly right, though. It is. Came in cold yeah. and said the exact same thing I did. We did a market, and it was fine. Like, I enjoyed it to a point, but I didn't, I just like, I wanted to go there and just talk to people. I I'm not interested in all the other stuff. <laughs> so I just paid that employee to deal with it and it showed up when I felt like it to just, you know, kind of interact when I wanted to. And that yeah. was fine. But we, I mean, I don't think we really made much money on it. It was kind of just like pissing in the wind, you know, but, uh, right. It wasn't terrible. I, we got a couple of customers out of it that have been long-term. I think that's, that was our goal of farmer's markets really was just to try to develop that person after the market's over. That's going to take home delivery from us, you know, and it's exposure. It's basically a marketing budget. The whole. Uh, uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. That's how I actually, um, when I, did my taxes. I just wrote off all the farmer's market expenses as marketing. <laughs> just there it is. Which is legitimate because, yeah. uh, you, you, you know, that's, that's, when, that's literally what you're doing when you're yeah. going to the market. Yeah. You're not there yeah. to make money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The time for money trade off at a market, but you got to do branding like any brand. When we would roll into towns and roll new coffee programs into like petroleum chains, we'd pay to have the dudes out on the pump with the rocket packs, right? With the five gallons on their back and they would put wow. them in little taster cups. And then you're pumping gas. They just like literally walk up hand you yeah, like half a cup of coffee. Like, here you go. Here you go. Here you go. That's the greatest thing ever. Yeah. If somebody it, just walked up to me and randomly handed me coffee. I'd be like, it'd be the best day of my life. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like those guys will always be outside, like uh, sporting events. Like if there's a hot beverage launch and you're or you're a test market for something, like oh yeah, yep. <laughs> test That's fantastic. Oh. Are we uh, <laughs> is anybody checking Odyssey here? I'm on Odyssey. Cool. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. Somebody, I do check Odyssey. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, here, somebody asked me. Uh, do I'm trying to do try, it. Do I have a PMA set up for my farm? I don't know what a PMA is. PMA. No idea. Mm. Marketing Association? I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Hey, ask again. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. Yeah, I'm like, what? It's gonna be. It's gonna be something super simple when we learn. What Words are hard and acronyms are. Yeah, hard yeah. my so farm is say. more of a farm in. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> So awesome. they're going to tell us, they're going to elaborate and it's going to, we're all going to be like, oh my God, we're uh. idiots. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, we were talking crypto earlier, uh, yeah. uh, but I held off. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I finally, I, I, I got um, the float NFT uh, plank holders deal done. Um, okay. It's my face. Let me see my plank. Okay. Uh if you want to hear a funny, funny thread, 
go to the telegram group for uh for float nft tokens <laughs> it's an old guy like yeah yeah i have no idea what you just said like start again I, just seemed like English. i've been trying i've been in there kind of watching what some of tra uh, what is transpiring and yeah, oh it, it's I fucking comical too. okay it's hilarious. so when you get it all said and done and you get there and you got old tech old iphone you can da -da, proof positive when they take your money they're actually you so, get your you get your nft that's the nft what we're looking at you, well it's a digital it. representation of the yes yeah. yeah. that's it's like a, a, it's a it's a wallet it's a it's the digital thingy in my okay. wallet i uh, know so. nothing about it okay which so, i know is like bad for me because i'm like supposed to be you know i don't know man i just geez, i have some i have some geez. crypto i guess maybe and that's it and i'm like terrible at it so well I want to use my float account, right, to broadcast my future stuff on. Yep. So having the plank holder NFT, right, gives you rights on float. And you'll be in a preferential class group having the first ones going forward as a creator. Since I intend to be a creator on float going forward. Well, so that in in short, that's how you like own your name on float, right? Like, oh, okay, yeah, I haven't figured it out. You know, uh, it, it gives you like access, like discounts to Float Fest, and uh, they okay. spell out the whole deal on the package. But yeah, it, yeah. it you're you're intending. Well, okay, no, here's the other. Yeah, yeah, I forgot this whole side of it. So anyway, why did I buy an NFT? I'm telling you why I actually bought one. Without you asking that question that way yes. which is perfect right i wouldn't ask you why it's okay yeah 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 <laughs> no but really that's why uh because i put, to put the badge on my thing and really to support like if you look at if you look at oh god damn uh mm, the logo um it's my favorite thing ever ah where are you meta mask mask um yes yeah, it's me that. it's me uh yeah okay so if you look at their logo See how at the bottom it says free people, and then it says free speech, free market, yeah. free, free, free people equals free speech, free markets. 20 years ago on the bottom of all my like professional business bullshit and all whatever, I, I, I started putting free minds and a squiggly and free markets. And then below that, free markets and a squiggly and free minds because it's a Mobius strip, right? Nice. Free markets, free minds, free minds, free markets, and it never stops. You can't, mm, once yeah. you see it, you can't unsee it. So yeah, that, so, so that is why I wanted to put a hundred bucks in to get a float token or three. So the business could have one, she could have one too. Um, but okay. cause I want it to succeed. But the real deal is I think next couple of months or whatever, when they finish up their bullshit for the actual tokens, they're going to launch to make the new float work. It's going to flow on float tokens or flokens or whatever. Um, all the NFT owners get airdropped 120% of whatever you bought. So if you spend a hundred smackles on the uh, NFT or a thousand smackles, they're going to drop you 1200 of them. Wow. So, nice. So they got, they got to set the market. What is the market? Is it still available? Them? Oh yeah. Yeah. Lots of them. And I know actually uh, better than that, they're running a contest for like a free one once a week for the next like 20 weeks or something or until they're gone. So right. I, uh, it's one of those. Yeah. How you play roulette. Uh, but I would for sure go enter the contest. They want, just want your email so they can spam you. But and I, I think there's some other shit you can do on the site, like upload some content or whatever, and they'll give you extra. Yeah, I have a, I have whatever. an email for that. So it's okay. So, no, anyway, yeah, I mean, storm, it's, interesting. it's happening. It's moving forward. I met, Kingsley and Aaron personally. That's why I drove down to Float last year. Nice. Yeah, yeah. You were at Float Fest. Yeah, that's um, the, that's the reason I drove down to shake his hand and look him in the eye directly. Nice. Yeah, that's well, a big thing to be able to do that with someone if you're going to support them financially yeah, or I'm otherwise. I'm going to invest any life energy in your project. Fuck, you better be real. <laughs> yeah, and if you're not, oh God help you, because I don't shut up or I'm not like polite. <laughs> I don't blame you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go sneaking around the back of the church and firing up. Trust me, their fucking world is gonna know. <laughs> you stand out front and just fire up with the blowtorch. I'll stand with you and help you. 
I don't know. I know I have a float account. I can't sign in. Um, nah, don't worry about it. Do it later. But it's no, not I'm trying to see it. I'm trying to see it, though. I want to, like, see it. Um, ha, ha, ha. So cool, I changed though. my little logo. So at Scramble and a float now, that's my icon is a little float token. Oh, ah, okay. I think I have it on my phone, phone, but I was trying to pull it up on a desktop here. I'm sure I'm going to get some official oh. one or some way to officially do it, but I always just fucking rob shit on my iPhone. I just screenshot nice. and shrink it. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> ID, <laughs> I don't know. ID. What? The new float. New float. That's out, right? New float what? platform, all that. The new stuff. No, like the no, new... This no. is still the no. old version. Oh, okay. They're not even the version 1.0. This is still beta. Oh, I thought they were out this is how little i know about float this is it's bad still, this is a bad like, advertisement for float no no they're not <laughs> even it's yeah. not really an ad <laughs> it's still in beta that. but they're it's still growing more and more people are coming to the platform yeah um you know engagement with people is growing uh wow. it's i'm excited to see what what all comes when they finally do launch the uh, the first iteration of of float it's going to be cool yeah Nice. Only to get cooler. So I'm like very not on social media. We were, Brian and I were talking about this. I, I like don't watch the news. I'm not on social media. I have no idea what's going on. So like today people wanted to talk about current <laughs> events type things. And I'm like, oh my God, I am not the guy for this. I don't even know what's happening out there. Like, are you insane? I know what yeah. happened on my like piece of land and in my business i don't know shit about anything else <laughs> like that's beautiful though because the people like when there's something that actually occurs that matters yeah. that's relevant to your life someone in your life is going to communicate with yeah. you about it almost always oh. this stuff is distractions and bullshit yep yeah you almost wanna, always so I'm you want to totally hear the craziest honest. story right everybody always says that right like you cannot escape you cannot escape the fucking stream on planet earth Literally, I was in kayaks with my ex-wife. We were off the northwest tippy tip tip of Washington at the tip, like the last island to Canada. Above high tide, the top was 18 inches. Like it was less than half a football field, piece of rock in the middle, fucking stick it out there. We had nothing. Remember those old radios used to like ring, 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 ring. Yeah. <laughs> We ate mushrooms at sunset <laughs> and like 3 a.m. No 3 a.m. <laughs> President or, or Queen Diana has died. Queen Diana has died. Mm. Interrupting all ships. It's like fucking. <laughs> We're just trying to move some shit in the middle of the water and look at the moon. And then all of a sudden. Beep, beep, beep. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I guess even when non-important shit happens, you cannot escape it when the media wants you to know. Yeah, like yeah, and I, I mean, I know when <laughs> I know when stuff's happening. I guess, but you know, I just don't. What it is, it, it nothing changes because I don't know about it. Like it's all the same thing. Who cares, right? Yeah, sir. But, uh, right. Dowie so we had a tiny. Yes. Yeah, you don't yeah. care though. You don't care. Yeah, I, yeah, you're right. I am. <laughs> don't give a shit. You uh, bet. <laughs> Right. I don't, why don't you care? Because I don't. Uh, oh, so don't like private membership association is what the thing PMA stood for. It looks like and um, yep. private membership is that, association. Is that like a uh, CSA or what? Uh, my club, uh, my farm. No. Uh, well, my, my farm doesn't have anything. Uh, I sell retail on my website, foodforcefarms.com. Uh, stuff. Just go buy it. Uh, my yeah. club. Uh, Mm. Yeah, I've been debating that. I got ordained, so I could do the paperwork and make it into a church thing. Or now that I'm ordained, I could just call it a church and fuck filling out the paperwork because it's not the whole point. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I guess I don't I don't name things or like call them stuff. Yeah. So people that are in the club know what they get. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, you know, it's the deal. Uh just call you know it what you want. Number, ask them to send you the last QWERTY code I sent out. It's a private entrance. Uh, you get extra stuff that way. So to be one, ask one. <laughs> mm. uh, I, it's nice. so funny. I hid that entrance so well on the internet, I can't find it. <laughs> I have to like go find a bag of coffee to get there. <laughs> nice. Oh, it's yeah, because it's on the bag or whatever. 
Yeah, because so I can't. put the QWERTY code on the bags, right? And then I lost the, <laughs> I lost the address. So yeah, no cut idea. One out, cut one out and stick it to your wall. You'll be all set. That's what I do with like oil filters and shit. I just cut the I box out. I need those out, guys that like hack the, the trays to come help me. Uh, I can't yeah. save files to save my life. <laughs> Because my spelling's so bad, too. Uh, it's, yeah, I'm a mess. Yeah, man. Um, what happened? Yeah. So, so that's cool. You got your float token. Floken. Yeah, so I, so I got my float cool. token. So when float comes out eventually with the flokens or the to or the chips, I'll get a bonus of some type. Um, nice. It looks so like the, I was on yeah. the uh, thing. It looks like I was on the message thread for on Telegram. I just uh, didn't even know it. Like yeah. I'm behind like twenty eight thousand messages or something. <laughs> oh yeah, when people just <laughs> join you to join you to the groups yeah. like the crypto. Oh, groups there you every are. The other day. Uh, it's 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 hard to keep up with all of that stuff i'm I've gotta leave some yeah what's, what's the point in being in half of them if, 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 if yeah it's just like ah oh, there's 700 or 2,000 messages just mark all as red and like, well, i don't know and it's yeah, such that's like it. bot land of yeah of just shit posting too so i don't know any groups i mediate and, is just like mm, boom <laughs> yeah the so one, ones that you're associated with there is no there is zero tolerance for any of that good yeah, yeah, but like, That's how, you're human and i'm not going to ask you nicely and if if it's offensive to like make sure you're not a bot then get the fuck out anyway because yeah. you're not going to last yeah. <laughs> yeah it makes no sense to me i don't under, like i was on um so much nicer when they're not posting every day and you only get real posts from real people about something you actually want to read. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's what I'm in a, like the survival podcast workshop group. I think you're in that too. And oh, yeah. uh, it's very exclusive and that's pretty good. Other than the one guy who posts boomer memes occasionally. And, uh, and you know who you are. It's <laughs> self-policing to it. Yeah, it's self-policing to it. Yeah, there's not a lot a group. of reposting of, of just fun. Yeah. Right? <laughs> We started a group just for that guy because of the boomer like, memes. Oh, that's but, uh, right. So he can, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But it is well, what it is. Anyway, yeah. So it's people who know each other in real life, right? So yeah. you can really like So we're just talking, we're just continuing to continue the conversation, right? Is that all that's all it really is? I just I like get in, I pop in and out of some of these groups though, and they're just pretty bad. But but the one that I'm on, I'm gonna I'm going to segue. You ready for this? Yeah, the one yeah. that I'm on that I see a million bots is the People's Convoy official discussion group that you left today, I think you said, right? Yeah, I and bailed today. I just I was in it for a while. Like the first message I saw, so I thought, oh, maybe this is legit, was a message about um, they're not going to ruin the Super Bowl, which I think we all knew was, you know, some FUD, some bullshit, you know, something like that. Um, but yeah, that group quickly got weird, I think. You know, are you in there, Rob? No, I'm not. But I'm just I'm nodding my head because some of the once once these oh. groups get weird, man. There's like they, they either yeah. course correct quick or they just they get, they go sideways. Yeah. It's, See, I have I like there's, there's a number, yeah. right? Once it gets so much traction out to you hit some ramp to X, and then it's like Agent Smith shows up, yeah, and just is there to like give like almost legitimate shit but still just a little fucked up crazy at the end yeah into the stream or complete crazy into the stream so you could either hate the bot or try to correct the bot right but you end a lot of time is a lot of fucking time with the yeah. bot so if like you I'm just saying minute one fucking bot go <laughs> that's what but yeah. the John, you thing, you, you You've got the good approach to social media, just limited engagement at best. I go through these phases where I'll, I'll, I'm I'm engaged and then like I like burn out and then I leave everything and I'm like, yeah, yeah, for six, nine months, a year, whatever. And then I'll come back and everything's changed. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, what? You know, it, it's every everything is weird. So I, I, yeah. I don't I don't know what to make of it. I don't know. It's the intentional like they want like the truckers. It's right. They want them to like rally to a point, right? Like, wouldn't the trucker thing almost be more effective if they like didn't all go to the same place? 
where they, they just fucking all, all if they all just yeah, yeah. Like, all, 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 it's called it's ah. called counterclockwise the key works yeah. both directions right counterclockwise yeah. nothing moves you're done you could sit on your couch with the beer and be warm yep. and it'll be exactly yeah just go the home same. then you don't have to worry about my new favorite thing i mentioned this to you earlier too so so i have things that annoy the shit out of me i know you're going to be really surprised right um <laughs> and a lot of those things like like when i see stuff that's like you know, like uh, Patriots. Listen, every I need uh, Patriots to rally. I'm like, shut the fuck up with your Patriot. Come on, get out of here with that shit. It's like, yeah, it's like if you got a stupid, I need Patriots to rally, then get yeah, right there. Yeah. Fucking, it's like on. you might as well just put a post that just says, "Wake up, America!" I can't fucking deal with any of that shit. So, like, my new thing is, and I see this all over New Hampshire, is the guys with the big truck and the little. You know, and uh, they have the fucking, you know, whatever. And they have the fucking Gadsden flag and the thin blue line flag. And oh, brother, I know they're all paying attention to the truckers thing. So I'm here to give a fucking PSA to those guys. All right. Uh, the cops, if you watch the trucker rally, are not your fucking friend. OK, they are stealing gas from the truckers. They're stealing wood, all that. Like, come on, man. They Like, it's just a it's a blatant. um example of what will happen with the police when and if people just say you know when we when we're geese and you poke us too many times and we say fuck you enough is enough right so and the goose strikes back well when the goose strikes back the pig in the fucking blue uniform isn't going to be your friend i'm sorry we're just using animals right now i guess <laughs> so, <laughs> and, it dry, and it just, i just i know it's just it's kind of my opinion whatever it's probably not a fucking popular opinion really but like i don't give a shit um hey. It's, but, it's 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 the it's truth. I mean, and the pig is a perfect example because some yeah. animal animals are more equal than others. Yes, you're not one of them. Yes. I'm not one of them. Yeah, you out there watching, you're not one of them. Get used to it because reality sucks. And the more we can embrace this, the more. Oh, I'll, I'll just stop. Go ahead. No, John. keep going. No, you <laughs> you're on a roll. Oh man, so the much sooner we can come to grips with solutions, yeah, and then just 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 say. Forget it, you know. See, Wait, it, who needs it? It's it's easy to like look at the cops and like they're the very very last edge of the of the bullshit that you have to see, right? Because you have to like they congregated so there could be a show for the TV, so that you have something to watch, right? That's the yeah. nasty edge of it, but really. Who's the super real prick? It's the dude in the fucking suit that has a secretary in an office that's sending those dudes out there, right? Yeah. So, yeah. fuck, you know? Like, they are all the same thing. The lady that processes fucking HR for the paychecks for the guys that are doing the, the fucking robbing and stealing and head bashing, she's just as culpable. And until... Yeah. We have the same disdain for all the oppressors, helpers, right? All <laughs> their, all of their, all of their helpers, all of the institution. Like, is the company person X works in built exclusively to suck government contract tit to produce armor for the fucking Gestapo? Yeah. Okay, oh, I don't give a fuck if you're a secretary in that company. You are just as culpable as the cop bashing the trucker's head against the ground. Yeah. Exactly equal. At least I can I can exactly. have some respect for the the guy that works for the military industrial complex that just says it that way. He's like, yeah, well, I'm, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm building <laughs> shit for the fucking yeah. machine, right? Like, like I, I got a buddy that that works in uh, water treatment for some. I don't even know. I don't even understand what they do, but I know it's it's a. <laughs> It's basically military industrial complex. It's just he's so far down the fucking line. Like he doesn't see any of that shit. And uh, yeah, just, he, he just says it. He goes, I work for the fucking military industrial complex. I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, you know, that's what you got to do, I guess, to get by. But, you know, for some people, I get it. It's a transition. I know there's cops out there that have gotten out and they're like, I got to get the fuck out. But I just like anybody who's thinking about going and being that. Like now, like if you're 20 and you're like, I'm going to go be a cop. It's like, the fuck are you thinking? That's crazy. You know, it's just like the worst. It's like, it's like joining the military right now to me. It's just or, like, what are you thinking? Like, or, you're going to get sent go off. And put on, put on the stormtrooper uniform. And, yeah. you know, when you're checking the people into the city, 
be the one that like Yoda just says, we're not the ones. Yeah. Fucking and what, yeah, but what's what's so weird about that situation though is like a lot of those guys, you know, they a lot of them started off to be they, just like they good tried. guys to protect yeah. and serve. They wanted to make then, a difference. Yeah, yeah. And yep. then a lot of them are no different than Johnny and Susie America out there, and they've got yep. the golden handcuff, and they're doing this job, and they know it's bad, and it escalates and it escalates, and and all of a sudden, you know, they're shooting rubber bullets at, uh, you know, and like what the hell's yep. happening? And and they or just cutting know, off people's like, bank where accounts. Where am I going with this? The, the, the big thing is like, if we all, no matter our profession, whether in law, we're in law enforcement or teachers or like whatever, if we're focused on debt freedom and like getting out of these systems and working with people out, you know, farmers and farmers markets and engaging with you know food producers and makers and all sorts of things and learning skills and shit like. That that stuff soon becomes it becomes less and less relevant, and um, you know, once you're in a position where you're compromised, you can you can walk away because there's there's plenty of solutions out there. But it, you know, things are the way they are because people haven't haven't found balance in their lives, and they're 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 trapped, and this is the result. It's manifesting in weird ways. Uh, oh, it's yeah, it's the end know. of a, it's the end of a, an empire, right? So you got to have lots of other stuff going on to hide the currency collapse and the, you know, it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely the, well, and in, the it that ends, shall not be named in the world of a solution. Yeah, yeah, I mean, right. so what are you know what what's everybody doing? Like Ryan, what are you doing? Because you know, we know that we maybe should be preparing for shortages and whatnot, because if, if this is re- if this telegram thread is real. <laughs> <about> <laughs> we were just uh, talking about that before you yeah. jumped on. I'm doing it. Yeah. Well, like, I'm looking at one right now that says Zanesville, Ohio, March 6th, Freedom Convoy to D.C., right? To D.C. Join up at 130. Yeah, and there's like it's pretty uh, specific, you know, about like the details. And it says March 6th, Sunday, March 6th. They're going to yeah. start now. I heard it was. I so think it's the whole pretty, thing's it, it coming this real. way, right? I, I, it's already but, spawning around the globe. I think they got yeah. trackers and shit all over Paris, and you know, with, with, had with this, yeah, with this group, do these appear to be coordinated efforts like that was taking place in Canada, or is this just a lot of random chatter about people doing stuff? It's, 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 it's. Uh, it seems like it's coordinated efforts. Okay. It seems like a lot of the subgroups that spin off of this for the states get shut down for some reason. And I don't know if Telegram's doing that or what, or if oh. it's just some fucking CIA agent. Um, and But then there's a lot of stupid shit in there in between. You know, there's a lot of, like, dumb memes about stuff. And, you know, there's the occasional good one. Uh, so, <laughs> like, but it, it seemed like there's a lot of questions in there. There's a lot of people that are like, where's my meetup? You know, where do I go? You know, that kind of thing. And then there's a lot of hyperbole bullshit in there. You know, like a lot of fucking, uh, you know, like I know a QAnon guy and I'll run into him at the bar occasionally. And I just like to get him going. Cause it's fucking a great time to listen to him go and talk about how there's some article in the, in the, in the constitution oh, that boy. says that the military can take over the government. If certain things happen and that's, what's going to fucking happen next. It's, it's, it's fantastic to listen to. It's just the best, right? See, that's my Facebook. Like, I'll go to the bar, get a Zambuca, beautiful, and fucking poke this guy until he just starts going, you know, and just like, and then laugh at him. Like, I just laugh at him. I go, oh yeah, okay, and I like laugh at him, but he just keeps fucking going. Oh, it's, it's we fantastic. had a guy on the bar stool. His name was Craig. Same thing. Yeah, Lots it's it's great. Today. And this guy's, a, this guy's a smart guy. Like, this is what I don't get. He's a smart guy. He's in like great shape. Takes good care of himself. Like, whatever. And he just fucking goes on this these things. He's like, he's at this point. The last time I saw him, where he told me that um, he thinks Alex Jones is a CIA operative to, to get people uh, to not take that world seriously. It's fucking hilarious. Anyway, so you'll see some of that shit in this Telegram group occasionally, which is entertaining at at, at least and whatever. But it seems like there's some coordination in here, you know. Um, I don't know. I, I'm still. I haven't left the group yet because I'm interested and in. in basically being warned ahead of time to what to get to what per, we should blah, blah 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 what we should prepare for there we go and right. weeks ago when this shit started happening i went okay i've got 
six ish months worth of food stored. Right. And I've got more meat than that. Cause I bought a half beef, but, um, you know, I've got probably six months of everything else. Right. Um, and I was like, I need more than that. And I'm in a position to where I can drop a fucking thousand dollars on food right now and put it up, you know, and vacuum seal some shit. So we did that. And now I can just kind of maintain a budget every week, month, couple weeks, whatever of a certain number per month. Right. Just to like, you know, so like we open a bottle of uh fucking ranch dressing and it's like, Hey, put that on the list to rebuy it now, you know? And it's like, it's working out really well. We also are lucky enough to have multiple freezers and stuff, you know? So I have, it's very organized. Like this freezer is for prepared baby formula. Cause we make our own formula and it's for, uh, you know, the bottom shelf is chicken. And in the middle, there's um, broccoli, frozen broccoli or whatever. And then this freezer over here is just the meat, the beef, and then, you know, and so on, right? And it works really well. So that's something we've done. I would really like to put up some fuel storage, but it's so fucking expensive right now. <laughs> and I'm an asshole and I didn't do it when it was cheaper, you know? So I kind of got to just bite it now, I guess, right? So yeah. I did put up another, like, I have 55-gallon uh, drums with a pump, crank pump I use to, for fuel storage. And... um I got about 60 gallons right now, but I'd like to be at like 110. Cause I also, I run a business where I deliver. So I, I need to, you know, be ready. But so we've taken some steps just because of this. Um, what have you guys done? Like, have, have you done anything Rob to like, make sure you're not going to be fucked when there's no supply chain. <laughs> like we just yeah. experienced this two years ago. Right. So I, I have, and I, the, the seed was, the seed was planted um, by, you know, I've got the, the all around growth podcast. And we've got a little chat there and it was planted by someone in there as we had an upcoming winter storm. Yep. And I got to thinking that, you know, we've got this commercial kitchen, which is yet to be inspected, but it's, it's, it's operational. We've got two, two freezers in there and then two stand up commercial refrigerators. <laughs> and um, while we have a generator and some fuel, one thing that I realized I was really lacking on was extension cords, extension cords to get from the generator to the cabin, yeah. from the generator in here to the office and then into the barn and not to mention, you know, the generator, but like, or extension cords, but some sort of adapters. Um, and when I went to pick some of this stuff up, what I noticed was missing was 100 foot 12 gauge extension cords yep i Tough, saw the same slim thing picking yeah you know and 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 if you're in a pinch you're gonna have to buy some junk quality and i'm not of i I'm, i no longer just want to buy junk and yeah. then buy more junk down the road i'd like to buy something that's going oh. to last so oh, look at the stuff on the spool these are things it's to think about cream. too three wire you mean like just buying some wire and then making your own uh, yeah, they, they sell the stuff that's kind of rigid coated, or they sell the stuff that's kind of flexi rubber coated yeah. on the spool. Yep. I've found if you just go buy it that way, you can almost afford to buy one extra gauge, huh. like for the length you want, right? And just put that's your own yeah. hands on. Yeah, use, get the better wire. I used some of that here at the grow room before I switched over to um, uh, LEDs that like daisy chain together. I had uh, T8 fluorescence and it was fucking the worst it was like you know, you know each, 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 <laughs> each flood table yeah each flood table has four plugs that come off the lights and there's 30 you know so there were a lot of uh, uh yeah yeah it looked like an electrical fire at any moment yeah so i made these um like it's led yeah i took like the gray conduit and boxes and stuff and i just ran it up the uh post of one of my grow tables or grow racks right and just zip tied it on. And I had four gang, you know, or whatever the, the double gang outlets, blah, blah, boxes. I don't know. I know how to do this shit. I can't remember the fucking words. And then like, so four outlets per thing. And I had them all plugged in, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I needed to get a cord from that massive monstrosity of outlets. That was good. Right. To plug it in. And that's what I did is I bought that stuff and I made my own cord from there. Like I used the metal box, clamped it in. Right. And then ran it to an outlet or a, a plug that was waterproof because that was important in this environment, right? Ah, so here's a, a real term for us. Yeah, well, that's a good idea. SKO. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. So, it's, so it's a hot and neutral and a, and a ground. 
So yeah. I wonder what the SJO stands for. Now I'm, and you now can I'm get four. I got four on my coffee roaster because it's two twenty. It's a good idea. Yeah, you got to do. Yep, yeah. What's SJO stand for, Andrew? Let us know. Yeah, what's SJO? So, the, the flex I went, always just seem more like they're tough. I went to Harbor Freight um because i i have their little credit card I guess at Harbor Freight. yeah they're, they're extension mm -hmm. cords actually they're not bad like they're not i'm sure there's better but i haven't had a problem with them and uh we use a lot of extension cords with the ducks and keeping water and stuff thawed and whatever um so and i managed to fuck up an extension cord with a plow because i was out back plowing snow around so we could walk back there and not die and all of a sudden, I'm like, what's that over there? And it's an extension cord that I hit with the plow and just ripped in half and managed, managed to Better look to through see it. it but... and feel it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I went, to, I went to Harbor Freight to do that, to get another 100-footer. And you're right. I couldn't find any. I ended up having to buy 50s in 12 yeah. gauge. And uh, they're not bad. You know, oh, here we go. We have a what's he got? service junior oil Smaller resistant. Diameter. Oil resistant. That's oil what it oil is. Resistant. They're there you oil go. resistant. That's that. So SJO uh, stands for service junior oil resistance. So it's a smaller diameter. I don't know how that would happen. Use it in the kitchen and say it's oil resistant. That's why we yeah. always bought But it's great wire. You're right. You, you, we should just be making our own cords. And you know what? I bet you if you just say, fuck it, I need a lot of cords and I'm going to need them going down the road. And you go to an electrical supply or you just have an electrician friend, you can probably buy that goddamn spool for a huge amount of money, but you'll have it for the rest of your life. That would be a perfect <laughs> right, group buy for like one of these uh, yeah. camping events where everybody's going to meet up anyway, go home with yeah. 100 foot of the real shit. At, at Which the is end. another, the other thing I forgot to yeah. mention. Yeah. The other thing I forgot to mention I've been doing is like, so we're at a year's worth of food now. Like literally I could, you could lock me in my fucking house for a year and I would come out at the same overweight status that I'm at now <laughs> and <laughs> it'd be fine. But I also, for my business have been buying, Anything I run out of, I'm buying a year's worth. And that that's I've run into huge supply chain issues already with perlite and soil and different kinds of seeds. And right now, like I get all my peas and all my sunflower seeds from Canada. So that's getting hairy. And I actually needed yeah, to order I needed to order sunflower. I have a couple of months worth on hand, so I think I'll be okay. And I can get them domestically. I just get a better deal and I get a better quality product up out of Canada from Mum's seeds. There's a plug. And uh I took a thousand pounds of peas like two months ago because that's a year's worth for me, right? For microgreens. And I'm just buying everything by the year now. And it's a little, you know, up front, it's tough, but it works really good. Um <laughs> you know, lock you in the basement for a year. Can we lock you? Well, you you could, but my so Dr. Barry knows my <laughs> issue well, and I don't have any problem telling it publicly. So I'm I'm a type one diabetic. So uh the reason I cannot lose weight is because I do not have time to work out formally and I have to fucking live with this nonstop, this goddamn insulin pen. And uh, I'm, I got to be my own pancreas and insulin's a fat storage hormone. So it's a good time. But uh, <laughs> but I have years of fucking insulin on hand, by the way, too, because if you are a diabetic or you live on a life saving medication, you need to fucking lie to your doctor about how much you use. And that's that. You know, like, oh, yeah, start squirreling yeah. that shit away. Or, yeah, yeah. No, that, that is something that I used to do with my anti seizure meds that I got away from because I was preparing for a like an extended backpacking trip years ago. Yeah. And I had I doubled my dosage, so every time I would pick up, I would stash and then rotate meds. Yeah, I don't do that now, but there's really no reason why I shouldn't it, or anybody that was that's it gabapentin? Watching shouldn't. Was it gabapentin? Or, uh no, no i take oh, okay. capra and um um you don't have uh, to tell it's yeah whatever <laughs> okay okay so i use the, uh, I for neuropathy I, and I, I have a ton of that too so uh, sorry go it ahead. was out go ahead. God, i don't know where so the real i think they're saying seven and a half percent official inflation uh but i think i heard an actual report that said like real inflation measured and not funny bullshit is running about 27 and a half oh wow so, i heard 15 oh, holy shit if, if that's true, if you're around to say you're around 24, I mean, shit, I remember the 80s, like 21 was the thing. So say you're around 24. Yeah. That's literally if you spend your entire paycheck this month on any commodity, food, fuel, forward paying of uh, goddamn rent at the current rate. So you don't get an increase pay like, Hey, can I pay you a month on the end of my contract at the current rate? <laughs> um, 
right? Right. You you are literally like, what are you getting in the bank? Zero. If you buy commodities, you're making two percent a month. If you're yeah. going to use the thing anyway, and you can forward pay it in hard dollars before they depreciate two percent next month, fucking why not? I don't know. I I I, I kind of ah, we got we loaded up on more beef and just kind of went through what's expensive uh, that we might need to replace in the next five years, like. Would when they like I okay so the uh, the Ford Maverick um, is a hybrid a little mini pickup right um, it's like is nineteen thousand it I thought it was just I think it's nope. just a straight up gas no no comes comes in a CVT hybrid that gets oh. forty three miles of the gallon um, oh there's an option for the hybrid that's right that's right yeah, yeah. guess what all two thousand twenty two done so can't get them oh really Hold out you can put money down on two thousand twenty three right now. So I'm thinking about as soon, but they haven't opened up sales yet because there isn't any other little truck. The other little Santa Cruz, it's like 20 something. The other one's really 43 miles a gallon. So I always yeah. say my Prius was my best pickup truck I ever had. I, I would put 1,500 pounds of concrete in that thing and run around town. I, I got 250,000 miles in her. Um, wow. So it's the same thing, right? It's just a different format. It's different seating and a cutesy little small bed. It'll I'm really kind of surprised. Of kind of surprised Toyota doesn't have a, a hybrid truck yet because they're probably the best at the hybrid thing, and you can't kill a fucking Toyota. So it's ridiculous. You could just you could just literally weld an old Prius, like cut the yeah. back hatch part off and weld on onto a bed, a, onto a Tacoma. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, therefore, in it, the, the thing is, it didn't care if you had a thousand pounds or nothing. Same mileage, 43 at 70 miles an hour with 1,500 pounds in it, 70, 43 you, miles an hour. What are you trying to pull? Where are you trying to go? What are you trying to do? There's, oh, me? There's a slew of questions for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, what, what, no, what no. Happen? Okay, so the deal is now I got a Dodge Journey, right? All wheel, six cylinder, but it gets 18 effing miles to the gallon. And yeah. I want to go out to New Hampshire to, to Pork Fest, Fork Fest. I mm -hmm. want to go to Float Fest. That's 5,000 miles round trip at 18 yeah. miles of the gallon versus 43 miles of the gallon to yeah. haul me and camping gear. Okay. And maybe the, our micro trailer that's a thousand to 700 pounds. Uh, Dude, get a Ford Transit van. I, I, we were looking at them and all that, right? But the Maverick is just such a cool platform of being pickup truck worthy. Yeah, but it's new. It's new, man. Like it might suck. Like the Bronco uh, seems like it's a total piece of uh, shit. It just boy. turned into fucking Scotty Kilmer's channel. So like, I had a, I had we're a in car land now. <laughs> That's a variable with the new. I, I killed. I killed that Prius. And in, in, fuck, man, it just worked and worked. I I averaged out. I was at four point eight cents per working mile for the car. Wow. wow. Right. That's beautiful. And I depreciated <laughs> at fifty seven yep. cents a mile. Two hundred and yeah. ten thousand miles. Yeah. So I have a transit. I have a transit van, the Connect, the little one. Nah, I fucking yeah. love. I love we, it. I will like. We lo we if love I didn't own a business, I would have it. We were kind of going and down that road, but the hybrid. The you 40. can sleep in it too. So how many miles a gallon are you getting? Like twenty six, twenty eight. It's, it's not bad. Is a game changer. For well, yeah, twenty eight to forty is is big, but to me. I know I'm never going to own a vehicle that gets fucking 40 that I can use or fit in and want, not want to kill myself. So like, I know that's not a thing for me. So if I can get close to 30, I'm just like, it's all good. Like to me, 25 to 35 is just the same thing. Cause like really how much truck. we talk. Yeah. For a working yeah. truck. That's great. So, for a round so I have the, I have the, the transit connected and the, the key on those is you don't want the fucking turbocharged engines. Cause you'll wear them out faster. Right. So yep. The 13s and before are non-turbocharged and they're taller and they look ridiculous, but they're great. <laughs> so I have one now. I'm actually lining up a second one I'm getting for, I think, five grand. We'll see where that goes. So we're going to have the addi new addition to the Dowie farm fleet. But uh, I love those vans, man. If I didn't have the farm, I'd still have one because like you can throw a full size mattress right in the back if you don't have the back seats no, and just it, sleep yeah, back there or whatever. It's great. Yeah. We've done it. We went up to football games with it and just air mattress in the back while somebody else is driving, you know, and you can get the, uh, you can put a hitch on it for not a lot of money and you can have the little uh, platform fucking deal. You can put on the back, you can put all your shit on it. They got a cargo rack, you get the big bag, 
which sucks because it's like a fucking sale. But, but that's you know, kind of my life. You, you should think ahead right now. Like in the next four or five years, is there anything that I'm going to kind of have to replace? Like I have to. I put a roof yeah. on the main house last what, during the middle of the COVID stuff. My buddy that owned a roofing company needed to keep some guys working. And <clears throat> it was going to be in the half to in the next five years was my calculus. And you don't did know it at the right was, time, man. Yeah. Invest in yourself. Invest in your income producing stuff or hard assets. That's what I, I would. That's what I would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So cool, man. It's uh, protect yourself. <laughs> I'm, reading this stuff. I'm reading the comments here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it seems like we have some other fellow type ones in the crowd here. So that's uh, unfortunate, I guess, or for like, you know, <laughs> lost 50 pounds on Kibito. That's good, man. I did lose a bunch. I used to be 333 pounds. So I did yeah, lose some, on Kibito, but I plateaued out at 265. And I just, my mantra now is I'm 265 for life. So fuck it. I mean, I'm 6'3, so it's not like I'm five foot four and 265 or something you know yeah but, you're um, not a, you're not a small guy yeah so that works but yeah. you know hey rob did you come uh, to my house once or was that negative. somebody else? it was no. a different rob okay yeah there was a rob that came to my house and i thought it might be you and uh drank mead with me on the deck and i don't remember that fucking day but uh, <laughs> it, it was somebody that wasn't it was a rob from it was somebody in survival podcast land that just, I, I wish out. I could say it was me it was and like that I couldn't years. remember the day either, but yeah. no. you don't, do you, you reminded more? me to ask Rob the critical question, the, the men of order stuff that we, yeah, I just looked it up your thing. That's the, uh, all around community podcast, right. And community. Mm -hmm. Uh, what, what is it? What is it? So, so this, this men of order project. Yeah. You, you can check it out at men of order.com. I, uh, I, I was invited to become a contributor, and if you are a writer and you want to, you know, check that site out, and you're interested in being a contributor too, by all means, um, check with me or, or inquire on the website. But there's all sorts of articles about money, dating, culture, tech, uh, sports, and mindset, and the, uh, the, the, the audience is geared towards, you know, younger guys, twenties, thirties that are just trying to improve their lives and, and find the community of other people doing the same. So I'm, I'm happy to have written a few articles on there so far and I'll keep, I keep writing them about once every two weeks. So like self-improvement, nice. freedom minded community. Oh, oh, you got it working. Dowie. Are you, uh, I'm trying. Oh yeah. Look at that. You picture a picture. Here, hold on. We can make you. Uh, I don't know how to make, make this work. The... I didn't get it to work though. Here, hold on. No, that's me. Cool. No, how do I make you in there? Uh... I don't know. I can't find it though. Uh, okay. It All right. Oh, there it is. Did I make it work? Hmm. Oh, yeah. No, wait, wait. I, I put us in the triple split. I don't. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, <laughs> you go. Oh, okay. In that window, it's working. God, how do I get you on? Oh, this is oh, interesting. God. Here it I'm is. Trying to make you the like main screen. No, oh, uh, I need oh, it to okay. be. Oh. I need it to be over me though. I'm trying to like put you on the main. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh shit. Yeah, but you can Ooh. see me. <laughs> you can still see me. Is nah, that whatever. Oh, oh well. Yeah, yeah. I tried. I tried to do this shit on the fly. I don't I have no planning. If you can't tell, folks, zero planning. <laughs> oh, dating, <laughs> mindset, sports, <laughs> tech, culture. Okay, yeah, Hang on, maybe I can. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah, this oh, is cool. up Jesus. Let me yeah, see if that's I can. Right. So the, the the that's a new section. They they decided to, or I guess we decided to to do a whole section dedicated to Joe Rogan on account of all this uh, all this uh, the, the newsworthy cancellation. So there's a guy that's basically snapshotting all of the episodes with timestamps, providing a Cliff Notes version of what's going on along with relevant. Uh, past episodes that are relevant to what's going on now. So that, that's kind of cool. But yeah, huh. there's a lot to explore. This has been, um, there's been a lot of content being built up for, well, about uh, over the past year or so. And it, it recently relaunched um, in the current format, like you see here. So definitely check it out. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. I think it's cool. I was, uh, 
flirting with starting a, a podcast kind of on my own that was going to be like how to be a fucking man because i felt like is that basically what we're talking about here though like it, in a way right <laughs> and 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 exactly and i mean i have two but it's hard because we've all got a lot of other things going on yeah. and there are some people that are dedicated to running this and it's nice to be able to create some content put it out there and yeah, but not and not not, have to, not manage it, not have it be yeah. your project, not have to literally do it constantly. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, like, because there is a lot of like, just lack of like, you know, being a man gets a shitty name now, right? Because yeah. of fucking wokeism. Toxicity. Yeah, man, man. Yeah, and it's like, look, when men act like fucking men, it's super beneficial to society, you know. And it's like, and it sets assholes straight, frankly. So like. You know, and it keeps yeah. dangerous people <laughs> at bay. Like you know? <laughs> yeah, it's not a, uh, I don't know. It's just that kind of shit drives me nuts. But, um, oh, look at me. Wow, big me. There you are. <laughs> hey, <laughs> big me, not bad. big. <laughs> no, you're, you're right, though. And it's, I mean, there are there are even a couple female contributors, but that 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 idea of yeah. of anything related to masculinity being, being bad or somehow related to the patriarchy or... Yeah somehow being uh, anti-feminine it's it's all ridiculous and yeah. uh and so yeah there there's there's a lot of good stuff there about simply that being being a uh being a good man uh, men of order <laughs> that's yeah. great man uh, you nailed it there's something there's so much different between feminine right and feminist yeah it's once you once you cross the line to the like we're better, you're like whoosh, cleaver separation whoosh, hierarchy. Yeah. Oh, isn't that all it's the shit? Fucking, it turns into the fucking, <laughs> turns into the dichotomy. It, it, it use it's just used for divisiveness all of a sudden and whatever. And it's ridiculous. Like yeah, there's, strong uh, there's, there's, gals are there's clearly Fuck. there's clearly a fucking role in society for men and women and how they're biologically going to just act in day to day life. You know, like it's I'm a, raising a child right now with for my first in my 40s with my wife, who's also in her 40s. Good we, luck, we, Dally. We, we clearly bring yeah. different shit to the table. You know, like obviously, like she's an emotional person. I'm, I have fucking no emotions whatsoever. You know, <laughs> like except for the ones where I'm like, I have rage. I have that. That's my one emotion is rage. But like, which is toxic, toxic, right? But um, so. But yeah, we obviously bring different shit to the table. She's very nurturing, like, you know, whatever. Like, she took care of us when all when we, we all had fucking the, the coof. So, you know, and uh, it, I don't know. It just blows my fucking mind that this is a, this is something that's even a question in our society. I, I, I'm like, it's so goddamn obvious. And I have plenty of friends, plenty of acquaintances that come from the single mom household. And there is an obvious lack of masculinity there and an ability to do stuff. You know, or like think uh, constructively and logically. A lot of times, you know, they're very emotional to every everything that happens, and uh, it's it's crazy to me, like I, that it's just not so fucking obvious in society that this is a problem. You know, and that's that that is a reality. I mean, you know, single sing, single parent households, and sometimes I'm sure it goes the other way. Parent is a female or male or whatever. Yeah. You know, oftentimes in that case, there's not a good uh, environment. Or, yep. or or people for for to, to, to provide guidance and counsel from and hopefully that people like that that find themselves in that situation can go to a site like this and find some of that and find a community of people who are there not unlike you know this community and not unlike other communities that that we're also involved in this is just one of many and they're you know this isn't a this isn't a negative thing you know men men and women are a very cohesive generally speaking uh symbiotic way in which we relate in the natural world and uh it it it, it just so happens that that the three of us are men and um i'm sure that if we were women there would also be a an empowering uh women of order or comparable site yeah yeah and um i'm sure there is yeah you know, Patricia wrote, it's not, it, be it, something. It, yeah, being a man has been redefined as being a dick and it's, yeah, it, it, it kind of is, it kind of has been, and that's unfortunate. It doesn't need to be that way. And we're just looking to change that. All of us are, I think. Is that Patricia? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> hey, Patricia. Like from this on, show. Uh, from this show, Patricia. Oh, okay. I didn't, I like didn't. Well, I just see the screen names. I don't know who anybody is. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's Patricia. Right. She she okay. she's getting interviewed on Lots Project this Saturday. Nice. I think right. I'm on. It's yeah, I'll wait till the end. I'm gonna be. I think I'm like. I think I'm on someone else's show coming up soon. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> No, it's, oh, it's, God, in, it's in a calendar. Nice. That's all I know. It'll fucking yeah. alert that morning. I'll wake up and my calendar will go beep. You got to do this shit today, and I'll be like, all right, <laughs> get up, go do the day. Oh, she says yes. She is on Lots Project this Saturday. It's Saturday early West Coast. I think like eight. Oh, <laughs> early. Yeah, late. Wow. I guess it's all. I don't. Too. So there's another thing. I only know that word Lots Project because of you, Brian. I don't know what it is. So I'm a Lots Project virgin. So I got to go figure it Same out. Same here. Yeah, I have no idea. So, so I'm going to go check it so, out at some point. Yeah, Brian and Corey are ch- – so basically they farmsteaded. They left the city, farmsteaded for, God, eight years. I don't know. He, he's up to, like, podcast 20 or 30 by now. Uh, he's going through the, like, little farming story. But they were out at Squatch. So they're basically dumping everything, selling shit in the spring. Um, they test drove their big giant trailer um, – the whole package out to Squatch Fest and back as a shakedown cruise to see if it will work. Um, so they've effectively moved out of their house kind of into the trailer, but then they went back over the winter. So they're ready to go. Um, so they're going to travel the U S and stay wherever boondock um, and meet different land owners that want to turn their patch of extra whatever into a cool hip camp. So they'll roll in do all the photography, send the drone up, register you on hip camp, order oh, cool. gravel if it's got to get ordered right. Put it, put the pad in, put the put the cute hand painted signs up for you know latrine this way, dog run, whatever, whatever. It's all services. Right? I need that. We need that. So yeah, so he he's gonna do like a little uh, world tour. I think he's already got seven or eight lots awesome. signed up. Uh, to Very get cool. uh, so he's already checked hip camp will let him manage it like airbnb like a lot manager so yeah. if you want to just not be involved in responding to the day-to-day like you could go either way right just have him come out set up the thing do some type of creative barter on how you pay him um and onward or or he can manage it for you because if you have just land out of town you want a campground on it and you want someone to answer the call at 2 a.m. We're like, how do you get through the damn lock? But boom. So it's management company kind of thing is what evolved out of the TSP workshop when we all started talking about it. Um, and then cool. he hooked up with Haley and Wayne in the TSP land group on Telegram. So if you're looking for land out there, you literally can find acreage out there for you know, five acres for 3000 bucks, like in Oklahoma somewhere mm-hmm. out in the boonies. Mm-hmm. But if it's on the way to or fro, all this super free um, um, camping, you know, like the government land. So Brian and Corey found out so many people are leaving and, and getting campers and boondocking. Like you get out there and it's kind of full. <laughs> like, yeah. especially if you're driving a big rig, try to turn it around and like, there's no rules off the grid out there or the park, you know, it's dirt. Lot. Like, so yeah. Like, do you want to be next to like Billy Joe? Like Wahoo! shooting off 45, like all day and night. Like, yeah. Once you go BLM land, right. It's, it's the wild west. Or you go the hip camp route. That's like RV friendly pad, super cheap, right. Maybe a monthly price. That's so there's a cash flow stream out there. They're going to try to help people kind of patch it all together. Uh, so if you're thinking about how could I buy some land and have my property taxes paid and have no involvement with it, just have it do it. Yeah, that might that might be a way. Wow. Um, but yeah, oh, the whole thing was living outside the system because they ejected themselves from Minneapolis and corporate jobs and all that, and went out and started the farm. And uh, they so they farmsteaded, right? So the uh, he can do all kinds of farmstead consulting. Also, they're just tired of living in frozen. Just all the shit for the animals and for, uh, you know, you know what it is, Dowie. <laughs> 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 Minneapolis is all right I'm, about that same line across. Yeah, all I've done <laughs> for the last six weeks is bitch about it. Unfortunately, I'm like, 
all I walk in, I'm fucking angry. My my poor wife just looks at me like, "What's wrong?" And I go, "There's fucking people that don't have to live like this, you know." <laughs> like I just yeah. hate it. I I'm think so they drunk. realize that they got the farmstead rolling right to a certain extent of like all, all the crazy side marketing you can do off all the selling this and selling that. And they woke up to the like, hey, our family's not like we you just we can be free of all of this and be free yeah. of like a piece of land for a while. The knowledge won't go anywhere. So I think their whole plan is roll for a year or two or three or whatever. And then when they find the place, they'll know like, holy shit, it's the place because some deal will just drop on them. That exactly. Exactly. They they'll just position themselves for it and it'll it'll happen. That's the <clears> way it works. What's the most important thing about land, really? If it's going to be like, I'm going to stay here, I would say the neighbors or neighborhood or what's a you know, the general, you're going to, if you're going to live there, I mean, God damn, I don't want to fight with my neighbor every day for the rest of my life. <laughs> I just move. Uh, yeah, it's, I have some of that yeah. going on but that's all. <laughs> you yeah. in a front of the neighbor now we know no okay tell us the story. people people way up the street nah i don't even want to get it it's fucking annoying but like <laughs> you know there's always someone who doesn't like what you're doing and it's just like dude fuck you it's my land go pound sand man like yeah somebody recently was annoyed with me for uh plowing my snow across the street to vacant swamp land that's owned by the oh, state jesus dude Woo, they put the here. snow on yeah. not your land <laughs> Right, I, and it, who's to it's say like, it's your snow? It's <laughs> vacant. All the gravel it, yeah. in there. Yeah, it's vacant, fucking uh, swamp land across the street from my house that's owned by the state because it's it's useless to the, anybody. Other, well, I, so I would buy it. Was the owner of the land, bitch, and it was somebody else, yeah. bitching that you somebody up the road. Somebody, somebody well. Somebody up the road did a thing and I offered some constructive criticism that was legitimate and they took it the wrong way. And then they started bitching about anything and everything they fucking possibly could because it's a boy, Karen. So, oh boy, uh, like it was a whole thing. Does he about, have a bun? Pretty probably. <laughs> I never even met the guy. I'm just like, hey, maybe you should try this. Next that time. makes it even better. Yeah. It's, it's in our, like we have like a community face fucking book page. And I just was like, you know, I don't ever go on there, but I'll log in and I'll just say, hey, like oh. this is. This was my experience at this end of the road. There was like an event and there was a shitload of traffic and it ended up full and they, they didn't shut it down. So it's just a constant stream of cars going in and out. Right. Cause there was nowhere to go once they got down there and it was a little fucked up, but I was just like, Hey, like, you know, maybe next year we do this, this, and this, and the guy freaked out cause he's a douche. And then, uh, Nah, he, I shouldn't even say that because he did later apologize, but, but the whole, this is the first person that's been like, you can't play your snow across the road. It's illegal. And I fucking love these people. That are like, oh, X, Y, and Z is illegal, and they have absolutely no goddamn idea what they're talking about. Like I used to run and listen to restaurant industry. I'd be open in a restaurant, and we'd be training staff, and I'd get some fucking asshole trainer that would tell one of my bartenders, "You can't give somebody a beer and a shot at the same time because it's illegal." And I would just immediately be like, "No, it's not. Stop fucking saying that. It's a stupid company policy. Quit trying to just tell people shit's illegal when it's not." Right. It drives me nuts. Yeah, We just oh. choose not to do that. Yeah. And it's like, and even if it was illegal, you know, fuck you. So like, I, I just like, so, so pushing the snow across the street, like this, I've been told like nine times it's illegal. And I'm like, no, it's not. I can't find it anywhere on the books. So I just emailed my local uh, dude that whatever he is in the town, like I'm in a pretty small town. Oh. So you can just email a guy. So I emailed oh. him. I go, look, I just want to know is because I, I won't even going to stop doing it, but I just wanted to know. <laughs> right. And he's like, I actually was at the uh, Department of Making You Sad for Vehicles yesterday, and it's all the same building. And he saw me with my farm shirt on, with my logo, and he's like, oh, hey, did you get my email? And I hadn't. And he told me, just here's, it's not illegal, but you can't do a few things, which like, after they drop salt, you can't plow the fucking salt off the road, you know, on them, right? Which makes some sense. Um you're not allowed to leave snow in the road, which I fucking hate that too. So I would never do that. And um, there was like, oh, and you can't put it on someone else's property, but it's not, it's just a piece of state land and nobody gives a shit. And he, so he was like, you're fine. But now I'm glad I have this conversation with the, with the actual guy in charge. So the next asshole that tells me, you can't plow your snow across the road, it's illegal. I can just be like, fuck you, call so-and-so at the town hall. They told me it's not, you know, and man, whatever. Anyway, oh, rant over. How are they going to? I know you had the same situation, apparently. Snow. 
<laughs> like you're gonna have to collect evidence. What are they gonna bring a bag of water in? Right. Oh, the other stipulation was if I push it across, I have to push it past where the plow deposited its snow. Because if I don't, the next time they plow, that could that turns into that wicked fucking hard pack. And the plow could hit it and spin the fucking plow truck around. <laughs> but like, oh, but yeah. I, the, the thing that pisses me off about a neighbor complaining about this is I specifically, there's two things I do. I go up to the end of the road and I plow, plow out the area where the fucking kids wait for the government bus to come take them off to fucking uh, prison. And then, cause I don't want them to have to stand in the snow because they're already going to go to a fucking, they're already going to a minimum security yeah, prison. Yeah. I don't want them to, have to stand in the snow too. So I plow that off. And then I come back to my house and I plow my shit across the road and I push it way the fuck back so people can actually walk without being in the road, right? So it's like over an embankment and shit. So I do a better job than the plow. And these people have the fucking audacity to complain about it. It blows my goddamn mind. Sorry, I know this is not an Agora subject. <laughs> it is. Cause you no, just, I was just going to say it kind of is. It. I don't know. Maybe. It's your neighborhood. So you just do it. That's yeah, how it rolls. Just, you don't need the there's fucking a select gun. couple of people that are they don't like that I have a farm, and then the rest of the people are like, "Thank fucking goodness, there's a farm at the end of the road," <laughs> you know, when there was nothing to buy at the store. Oh. So, yeah, yeah that's what the crazy it's totally related because so many people have a beef with people trying to do something on their own for themselves, and then they try to default to some retarded argument like oh, it's illegal. Yeah. And, 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 and because I don't, I don't know, like that's, that's, that's the best they've got. Yeah. And, and, and it's just, it's sort of a sad state of affairs when this is where, this is the situation that we're in. I, 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 it's yeah. so t- I want to, this is what people have to concern themselves about. Is, is, so they're the yeah. same one business. though, right? That I want to follow them. Butcher shop I fo- and I get your sauerkraut out. out. Yeah, go right? ahead. Sorry. Because they want to get the sauerkraut from the fancy butcher shop that made is made by the handmade tiny farm, but then they don't want to live next to it. Like, yeah, they they're super happy yeah. that you exist when they're in their Karen. Like, I got my Visa card yeah. out mode, but then they Just fucking hate you when they go home. Like, like, yeah, the the people are living in this bifurcated world of like non reality, and yeah. I don't know how much longer they can. Get away I think the commies, uh, the commies call it NIMBY, right? Not in my backyard. They're mm-hmm. not wrong about that. Like where I grew up, it was like fucking no jobs. I've covered this, a field trip through the Great Depression. And um, yeah, they wanted to put like a coal something, some place where they're going to store it or it was a transfer thing or I don't know. Who who knows? Could have been a fucking toxic waste dump, to be honest with you. It doesn't matter. <laughs> there were no Stay goddamn jobs. Yeah, there's no jobs, and then it's like, hey, here's a thousand jobs, and everybody's like, no, 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 we don't want that here. And I'm just like, okay, yeah, cool. Go work at the fucking dollar store and enjoy it then, you know, because that's all you're yeah. gonna have, and that's all they have now. I was right yep. once again. I'm always fucking. Right. No. Okay, you know okay, no, that reminds me. Okay, so when uh, when I got to doing the uh, the planning here for the uh, for the event, right? Candace got into the like, okay, I don't want to hear fucking politics in the goddamn house, blah, blah, blah. Right. And I was like, okay, okay. I get all the stuff you don't like about the environment that could happen in the future. How could we make it fucking cool? <laughs> like, what is the best thing that you can imagine? And that's where she came up with the permaculture theater, right? And yeah. the no politics zone and like a positive thing, because it's about changing the environment of a town is about you gotta like. How can we develop this place to be so fucking cool that yeah. cool people with like extra skills that aren't dependent come here? Because once you get dependent people, it doesn't matter if they got money to feed themselves now. If they only survive because they're sucking tit of something, anything, they won't keep up with inflation, right? And then oh, they're a burden next week. Oh, what are you going to do now? They're around yeah. now. They're Mopey Joe in your fucking happy town. Ah, I should. So. Infl- in- inflation's a weird thing. You know, we were talking about this earlier, and you know what? I notice stagflation. Like, in- That's in- what's going to be. Weird. You know what I notice? Like prices go up, and people are complaining about it. Like prices are rising on, say, like a the 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 the, the price of a ten piece chicken McNuggets or a Starbucks, or the price is going up on 
you know, the new Chick-fil-A in town and how much a sandwich costs and, or the price is going up on, uh, you know, uh, like diaper or whatever. But like, there's, there are people that are using cloth diapers that, you know, what hasn't gone up lately. Like the, 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 the price of beef from my friends. Yep. I haven't seen that really like yeah. change Winter. a whole lot. I mean, you know, when you, when you start, when you start really buying and supporting people locally, you'll like things that you really consume a lot of aren't, aren't, aren't as they're more stable and, yeah. you know, and, and you're living better. It's just, it's, it's, it's kind of weird because, well, I mean, John, you, you, you know, in mean, YouTube, Ryan, you guys get it. It's like, people are complaining about all this shit. And it's like, wow. Like, I got, yeah, I got no issues. <laughs> yeah. When know. you deal like, with farmers directly, the cost of his cow didn't really go up because he's grass fed. Yeah. It's, it's a, a field that's, you know, you're not receiving it every year. Like, we so have, his costs haven't gone up. He's passing a little through because everything's going up, but he's not going up near as fast as Costco or Safeway. Yeah. Right? We have some... anything. It's just a logistics asset because, you know, I don't know. That's that seems to be the only hardship is trying to uh, trying to get things turned around in time, which is another opportunity I think for people who are into home butcheries and doing things like that. There's a lot of people pe- people are people are growing more food, raising more animals, but the inability to have them process that they don't want to do it themselves is yep. decreasing. That's my next challenge. Here is. So my plan, so I, I did meat birds years ago and I, I don't do my own processing. I fucking hate killing things and it's, I don't have time for that shit. So like yeah. I had a place around the corner that was doing it and I kind of got to a point where I was like, I don't really like their, their practices. They wanted me to drop birds off the day before with no water in the cage and leave them till the next day. I was just like, I'm not into that. It's like August and shit. This isn't cool. Like, so fine. I moved on. They're retired now anyway, so I don't have to worry about that. But, um, my next guy I found was everything about what he did was fantastic, right? Just everything beginning to end. I dropped my birds off. Uh, you know, you transport them in a cage. He would, if he wasn't going to process them that day, he would put them in a pen to fucking walk around and shit and give them feed and water and whatever, or just water. If he was going to process them like the next morning. Right. But they were, you know, in there. Like one time I brought him turkeys and he wasn't going to get to him for a week. And he put them in a stall. It was like five turkeys and just, they just lived in there and his farmhand guy fed him, right? It was like the perfect operation. And he, the way he processed was super humane and whatever. He's gone now. Yeah. So I'm looking at like, so a few months ago, I said to the wife, I go, look, I go, I think this year what we're going to do is three rounds of 12 chickens, right? For our, just for us. And, you know, so 36 chickens is plenty of chickens for somebody like me who eats fucking ribeyes as much as possible. So <laughs> like, and do like four turkeys maybe, right? And a couple of Muscovies and call it a day. I'm like just this week realizing shit, no one's processing anymore. So I know in the Northeast, man, it's like a fucking wasteland, a barren wasteland now of processors. Like, yeah, you have pigs or cows, you can get them. But I've been hearing from guys doing, you know, larger animals that they have to be booking out 18 months in order to get. Oh, yeah. They come to yeah. you? I was just going to say that. Else? You no, this is had a lot. Yeah, for us, this is loaded up and take it. There's like two places locally that do big animals, and then there's some up in Maine. Um, there's like one in New Hampshire now, and that's it. There's like one in the in Vermont on the border, and they might do chickens, so I gotta look into that. But um, I might end up having to process myself, which ugh. but or I might just find a guy. Like I I do have a good relationship with a farm in town that with this guy where so if I hatch uh 200 quail to sell. And I only sell a hundred, right? Um, he'll process the other hundred for me in in exchange for half. So I just right. drop off a hundred quail, and he gives me back a hundred processed carcasses. I take them home, vacuum seal them for us both, and give him back fifty. And it's a good deal to me. But I I don't want to raise seventy two fucking chickens though, <laughs> right? I want to do thirty six because I don't have a lot of land, you know. So I we'll probably maybe work something else out with that guy. But that's like I think the days of, I don't know. Like, I feel like no one's going into that because it's such a shitty job too. You know, like it really does fucking suck if your job is to kill shit every single week all the time. And I don't think it's very appealing to people, you know, 
So I think that the small time guy is going to be the way to go. Yeah, I, I agree. Expensive. I think. It's are you seeing more the same? Did you have places close? Where are you, Rob? Sorry, I don't know what's Northeast there. Ohio, and it's there's okay. there's a lot of similar. Oh yeah, so you know Drew issues with, with whatever time frames and. Uh, but yeah, I think I think that the, the the way of the future is knowing a guy, and it, yeah. it, you know the other problem is is having everything with inspections, and I get it. That's just that's part of the game, especially if you're trying to sell meat. But um, you know, down the road, uh, you, you know, there's yeah, you can still sell meat if you've got it processed and packed by somebody that's not you know, inspected. It's just, you have to, this is the counter economy and this is going to become more and more viable The with, with more and more things happening. I mean, yeah. it's just, we're seeing it now and it's just a matter of, of to what, to what scale and to what end. So, yeah. um, the one it nice thing I haven't used me in the like eighties, right. When I was stuck in high school and you had to look up facts for reports, I always put in bullshit that would annoy them. But the, the uh like the cia database right on every country's output cannabis was the us's number two cash crop every fucking year in the 80s as wow. acknowledged by our cia right and in the 80s yeah because they were completely selling it. illegal like completely everywhere right so it's the number two cash crop for the fucking us economy that doesn't exist so yeah, how will things get done? I don't know. Yeah. The way they've always yeah. got done. <laughs> yeah. Well, in New Hampshire, we can we can sell. Uh, I can go ahead and just raise some chickens in the backyard, process them myself, and sell them anywhere I want. Except for I can't resell them in a store. Is the only catch with no USDA. So I mean, it is New Hampshire a little better on some of this stuff? But yeah. if you, you want know, to follow the rules, you got to sell them on the. F- on the farm here. I, I feel like i almost feel like one solution might be the community solution for this where it's like you round up seven or eight farms that want to do birds or whatever you're doing and everybody pitches in and you get the equipment but i i've always loved the idea of shared equipment but i've never been able to figure out who the fuck does the maintenance wow <laughs> like, there's right. gotta be a mobile if, job I, right if and, joe breaks it who the fuck pays now <laughs> you know like, like somebody hosts the mobile guy like farms yeah. always have extra space, right? And youngsters that are like young and eager and have like muscles and time need places to live, right? So there's yeah. a trade there for somebody like, hey, come live in my place. You do all my butchering and your mobile rig goes out and does the neighbors and that's your flow, right? And your cost of living yeah. is, I don't know, nothing. And I just, see, well, and, and there, there, there are people that are doing that. And, you know, I think this like, like, for example, I, I know some folks down uh, in uh, Mount Vernon, Ohio, Hand Hewn Farm, Andy and Doug. Those guys are awesome, and they've been doing this mobile thing. They're actually doing it full time now. They've, they've been able to grow it to the point where they can have it be the, the, the thing that supports the farm. But, you know, for people like that, and they're booked out, you know, yeah. going to people's houses, they're booked out like way in advance. But that would be an awesome opportunity for the go-getter young kid to be like, hey, like I'm here. This is what I want to learn. I want to apprentice under you. Like, let's work something out. Let's work out some arrangements. And um, and yeah, it's only a matter of time before that kid can do the same and then basically take any overflows that they can't handle. It's it's and that's applicable to anything, I think. Any any whether when you borrow your me, rent any- to be free with your services and as you roll, like think about the soft launch. Like what can we do to help people start new side gigs? If you can help them soft launch easily into the thing, fuck, <laughs> come on. It, it yeah. lifts all the tide, all the boats. Help people yeah. soft launch. Their, if you're in a position to help people, that's how you actually help them. Don't give them shit but make their cost of entry into the new thing a little bit easier. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Ever, everyone wins. Yeah. Hey man, we're at an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. (laughs) Thanks for running home and thanks for staying Rob for sure. This isn't no agenda. (laughs) Yeah. This has been no agenda. I've been getting into that. (laughs) Not bad for no agenda. 
<laughs> like three hour <laughs> show. This is it, Rogan. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we we'll go around. Uh, uh D- D- Dowie, go. Yeah, man. I'm gonna be on Tim the Toolman show on Monday. It looks like <laughs> that thing Ooh, I couldn't I figure out it. earlier. Um, and uh, which I'm glad this is coming up because it's on what four days, right? Something like that, and maybe five. Oh no, wait. That's wrong. I think it's Sunday. Yeah, sorry. Sunday, February 20th. I'll be on Tim the Toolman show at uh, five or s- five o'clock. I don't know. If- he lives out where you live, Ryan, right? I don't know what's. I think uh, he's like five your, o'clock yeah, yeah, Eastern. He, this time, so. Yeah, I think it's five Eastern. Uh, a little because I put it in and, it, and my phone did it, the magic. And then I'm in. Uh, <laughs> I'm at John at DowieFarm.com. And, uh, or that's my email. If you want to email me for no reason. And I'm at, you know, if you go to dowiefarm.com, there's my cell number on the front. So if you want to send me a uh, nude pics or something, there it is right there. Nice. Knock yourself out. <laughs> right. Pictures of, pictures of blue cheese. <laughs> yeah. Right. I might go get some wings when we're done here, man. There's 10 cent wings at a place in town. And I don't even understand how that's happening in today's world. 10 cent yeah. wings. They're losing like 40 cents a wing right now. Rob, what do you got? Right? Ten cent wings are little chicken toes. Mm. (laughs) There's no pigeons Uh, in this town. (laughs) What do I have? I've I've got a a podcast, the All Around Growth Podcast, that anybody can check out on any podcast player or on Float or Telegram or Twitter at All Around Growth. And then here at the homestead is York Meadow Farm at yorkmeadowfarm.com. And uh, you can sign up for our newsletter, see what's going on, and on social medias that aren't all that active at social media or at York Meadow Farm. But hey, we're trying. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. Yeah, that's and it. If you drop, <laughs> that's I just, it. I can't get it to focus. I just subscribe. All around growth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So if you drive like Show. a maniac, ah, you got to listen to Rob's podcast. You will get the <laughs> opposite perspective of what the people you're ripping around are thinking oh it's the oh best. really i love it i'm, I'm gonna listen to it, it on delivery days when I'm doing oh it. you're gonna dowie you will when you I'm, will yeah, yeah, yeah. the I'll fucking van won't the van won't go over 93 miles an hour because as a governor i do delivery oh. day almost oh. exclusively at 93 miles an hour <laughs> go listen to the, the snowstorm editions a few weeks ago you will be dying oh cool rob i love you yeah uh, you guys okay. got screwed too oh. right snowstorm yeah i forgot are you part of the gsd crew rob is that what is that you that's uh yeah i, I, okay. I, I believe it is still a you thing. know steve harble were you at perma ethos mm-hmm. ever yeah down there a few times okay were you at the one uh i'm fuck, off the I token say, never went i think i met you there uh, was it like the greenhouse tear down and rebuild or? Oh, wait. I put up uh, Texas Prepper 2 greenhouses. The kids shot a pig. It was that one. Mm. Uh, it was in like June of like 2012. 13. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like were... pig. It was at the end. <laughs> I don't think I, think I was, was there uh, that early, but I was okay. down there like 13, 14. Yeah. I think this was the last event they had there. I think. Mm. Spearco oh, was there. No. Chris Prater was there. They were making st- this is great pod, by the way. Oh, it's okay. And, uh, uh, I'm at scrambling on <laughs> everything. Oh, uh, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Float, Streamyard, uh, foodforcefarms.com is my website. And since we talked about my uh, my April first, second, and third workshop. Yeah, man. I made the ticket buttons, but I have not yet told anybody except you guys. So hey, hey, there's only eight seats. So go. They're man, going to the permaculture groups for a week before they go up to the freedom community. And then they're out to everybody. Get them. So get them while they're hot and get in the 100 club. I Come missed the talk. Me. Did I miss the talk about your workshop? Yeah, yeah, we're going to smoke so it. much fucking weed. Yeah, if you that's don't like this, that's not what I was weed, interested in. <laughs> Don't yeah yeah oh oh that is my disclaimer on my Airbnb. If you read my Airbnb thing, it pretty much says like you know don't bring kids and if you don't like cannabis, probably a best not a good place to stay for you. This is why this is why I've not stayed at your Airbnb. Yeah yeah. So anyway, <laughs> do each his own. So yeah yeah, be warned if you come, you don't want to hear any like that smells like weed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, cool. All right. Oh, oh, yeah. We got a honk for the truckers and to, you know, just piss off Facebook. I love it. Honk, honk. Honk, honk, honk. Have a good week, everybody. Ah, yeah, see man. You guys. All right. Bye.